Hi there. Hi, how are you? How are you? Would you like to choose a coconut? I would like to choose a coconut. Okay, tell which me, one's talking to you? Well, this one is talking to me, but tell me why. Why should I choose that coconut? Well, there is no intellectual uh, decision-making process. It's a purely emotional thing. Purely so emotional. This one's it's that talking, one right there. It's, it's yours. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is all about the uh, It's kind of like attraction and relationships. Laws and relationships. Absolutely. You must be sure. You look like Tim Van Orden. Yes. You're like the famous running man. Okay. Uh, obviously, you're pretty nuts about health, which is why you're checking out the coconuts here. Yeah. Coconuts about health. Now, you're Tim, right? Yes. So you know that this is the most hydrating beverage on the planet. There isn't anything better than this for hydration. Do you hear that? Yeah. Nothing better for hydration on the entire planet. Unbelievable. Learn about Mars or Venus, but on Earth. Try one. Yeah, yeah. Why is that? Totally addicted, so you won't be able to stop drinking it. Well, coconuts are full of natural sugars. They're also full of abundant electrolytes. It's very similar to what you'd find in human blood plasma. So you're not only replacing your water, but you're getting a healthy source of sugar, and you're also getting electrolytes, which allow reactions to occur inside the body. So can you actually like drink that instead of water every day? You can. Yes. So instead of your so many you know ounces of water, you replace it with coconut water. Yeah, in is fact, that the deal? People often ask me how much water I drink, and the answer is very little. I do uh, quite a bit of coconut, but also very juicy fruit. So if you're consuming juicy fruits, and I consider this a, a nut or a fruit, I'm not sure. But if you're getting your water from plants, you don't need to drink them. Well, at least not nearly as much. Okay. Now, um, why do they call you the running man? What's, what's the short end of that long story? I started running in 2006 to prove a point that one could be an athlete and a raw vegan at the same time. A lot of people told me that it wasn't possible. You'd be too weak, you'd be skinny, you'd be deficient, that you need protein, and even a vegan might be able to do it because they eat beans and rice, but a raw vegan, not possible. So I started running to prove raw. So you're like the first of its kind doing that? Yeah, at the time I didn't know of any other raw athletes. I looked all over the web, couldn't find anybody, found some vegan athletes, but nobody that was doing the raw vegan thing. Now, were you running before? I started, I was running in high school and college, but that was 17 okay. years earlier. So I started running at 37. So from 37 now until 45. And you just went into the raw diet, raw vegan diet without... Okay, that's interesting. You just jumped into it. Yes, this is brand new for me. And I've gotten quite good as a runner. So I've proven my point, I hope. Okay. Well, let's talk about some of the pointers. Um, what would you recommend? What kind of food, superfoods, or protocol would you recommend to improve a person's athletic performance um, in general? Well, for me, it's not just about physical performance, but it's also about sustainability and expense. If people are eating foods that decimate a certain environment or ecosystem, um, that's a food that I'm not going to endorse. For instance, quinoa, which is a great food, is becoming really problematic because the people in Peru can't afford to eat quinoa anymore. It's been a staple food for them for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Well, but when America gets an appetite for quinoa, somebody else suffers. There are a lot of foods out there because they're grown in such limited quantities. So for me, it's all about foods that are easy to find, that are inexpensive, that are sustainable, and are performance industry enhancing. Okay. Predominantly, uh, fresh salad greens with carrots, beets, radishes, things that can be grown in here in North America. Um, lots of green smoothies with kale, bananas, dates, berries. So at least half or three quarters of the smoothie can be grown locally. The bananas clearly not, but predominantly local foods. And uh, then other fresh fruits. That's predominantly what I eat. Very simple whole foods. Fresh fruits and greens combined in salads or smoothies or alone. A few nuts and seeds, but not many. Okay. Let me ask you this, Tim. How easy it to, you know, go into a transition from, you know, mainstream food, shall we say, or even healthy food choices to raw vegan? 
I understand you have like a DVD on stuff like this to help people understand that and make that transition. How long does it take? Is it like a year, six months, or? It depends on where you live and it depends on your social structure. Yeah, actually it's an audio book I have. I have one in my pocket here. Okay. If it cooperates. Turbocharge your life. Doesn't that sound fancy? Yeah. Basically, I would travel around giving people dietary advice. I was giving them advice on training and fitness, but their lives weren't changing. And I noticed that I was also having struggles, but not physical struggles. They were mental and emotional struggles. So for the past six years now, I've been researching psychology and neuroscience to try to get to the bottom of why do we struggle with diet? Why do we struggle with ourselves? Why do we know that a plant-based diet is a better choice, but then not choose it? You hear people say this all the time, I should go raw, I should go vegan, I should run, I should bike. But they don't do it. They just should all over themselves. So this is my attempt to bridge that gap and provide the missing link to give right. people access. Right. So what, are, what are some uh, simple pointers that we can uh, look at? You know, the pointers are, first of all, to be gentle and kind with yourself. And you asked me about the transition, how long does that take? <laughs> if it's not a gentle transition, it's not going to be successful. Oh, if you live in an environment where there is abundant fruits and vegetables, and where there's abundant farmers markets and local produce, and a large community of vegans or raw foodists, chances are you'll do very well and you can make that transition easily. But if you're in an environment where it's difficult to get access to fresh foods, especially in the winter, or where there's not a social structure to support you, either your friends, family, spouse, uh, or the community itself doesn't really endorse what you're doing, that's going to be a difficult choice to make, and I would recommend doing it much slower. When I started, I was in Los Angeles, so it's very easy, but in Toronto or Vermont, where I live now in the States, it would be a very challenging choice because yeah. you don't have that network of support. Mm -hmm. So, simple, easy choices, gentle, don't force yourself to do anything. Okay, let's go back to, to running. When you're getting prepared to run a marathon, what kind of foods would you eat more, more often or, or different foods? You know, to be honest, it doesn't really change. The diet that I eat for daily performance is the diet that I eat for athletic performance. Wow. And it stays very simple. I may eat more calories, depending if my training is increasing. But as far as what types of food I'm eating, it remains the same. Simple, whole, fresh produce. Excellent. Okay. So let's go to, to your website for people who like to get more information about... Yeah, the website is runningraw.com. I also am Running Raw on Facebook and Running Raw on YouTube. Okay, great. Thanks for a very raw interview. Cheers.